everybody stop. The book is out, link in the description. <laughs> We worked very hard on this, okay? We did so many things. There's all this stuff we have to clean up. We ate paper. I wiped my butt with my own book. Why? Why did I do that? We did it for you. This is for you. The link is in the description. Go click it. Go get the book. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, available everywhere. And for everyone who pre-ordered, it'll be at your door very soon. Thank you so much for pre-ordering. I kiss you, I love you, and hey, thank you. This is one of the most famous fast food tacos in history. And that's not gonna stop us from crowning a new king. Okay, so today we are making the Doritos Locos Taco, one of the most requested, one of the most famous, really the only requested taco I think I've, I've had. We've done Taco Bell before, we absolutely obliterated them, both times I think, I don't even remember anymore. I mean really this is just a regular Taco Bell taco that's in a Dorito taco shell, right? Isn't that it? But I don't understand why everyone's so gung-ho about it. It's like, okay, can we, can we find something else more interesting and forward-thinking in food? No? Okay, no? <sighs> I don't have much else to say other than we are going to dominate this one. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Where the damn bill at? <laughs> Maybe if I go around the Jason's Deli like everybody else does. Is there no Taco Bell here? Is it one of the, is it a Jason's Deli Taco Bell? We've never been here before. Why are there so many people just walking around? Go home. You wanna see some toxic masculinity real quick? Tune up, the manly salon. Because you can't go to a salon and be a dude. Wow, we found it. Oh, it's so fun playing hide and seek for this. Uh oh, this Chevrolet has a skull on the back of theirs. It's like Chevrolet. Hey yo, he from the Manly Salon. So we've now been in line for like five minutes. This guy is still ordering. I'm I'm almost certain he's reciting the entire Certified Lover Boy album. Like the guy that's on the mic is like, yeah, yeah, you going off? Hi, uh, can I just get four Doritos Locos tacos? Also, what is this chick crispy chicken sandwich? What is that? We gotta hop on the chicken sandwich train like all the other fast food places, but we only make tacos. Stupid man. Also, what did this guy order? He's already He's already gone. How is that even possible? Thanks so much. That bag is colder than the finest air conditioning system on the planet Earth. So we've got the bag. See, I placed it lightly. That way people can be like, you crushed it when you dropped it. Is there a warship going over? <laughs> like, what is going on? First thing, I just want to talk about the design real quick of the bag. Not bad. They've had this same one since like 1832. At least they're not doing what McDonald's is. God, horrible. So bad. These are ice cold. These are colder than ice. Is that what happens when you eat this in your car? You've had too long to fix this. Nothing says bon appetit like seeing your food almost completely wrapped in uh, cardboard. Cardboard, mind you, that appears to have been poorly cut by scissors. Do you see this? What is this for? Why do they take the time to do this? So this is a Dorito. That's cool, I'm with that. What is this? This is for the sticker. She peeled the sticker off. She went like this. Here you go. Where do I even begin? There's just so many things that are wrong with this. The funny thing is the Dorito aspect barely shines through. I feel like it's completely overwhelmed with that classic wet lettuce. This what y'all are all hype about? Johnny, come change the diety. The baby made a mess. Oh, <laughs> sorry, just a Doritos Locos taco. <laughs> There's nothing special about this. I don't know why they even created this menu item. It's all about the hype and we're going to extinguish that. Wow, here we are making a Doritos Locos taco. Not gonna lie, kind of excited. So let's not waste one single taco finger licking minute. Let's break this down into components. We got the meat, luscious and lovely. We got the taco shells with a beautifully delicate yet earth shattering crunch. The lettuce, which is usually a letdown. And of course, Papa's thick cream. Oh, and also the cheese. Can't forget the cheese. Oh, uh, also the tomatoes. Right, forgot about those. Let's first talk about my cream. All right, all right, our cream. In a medium bowl, add half a cup or 120 grams of mayonnaise, a third cup or 82 grams of sour cream, two teaspoons or five grams of Aleppo pepper, three cloves of garlic, grated, and salt to taste. Give that a nice little whiskey. And that's your cream. Doesn't seem like much, but this is actually one of my favorite chili cremas that we've made. You know what, actually, let's make this a life lesson. There are times in our day on this earth that less is actually more. Thank you. Optionally, you can put this guy in a squirt bottle. Nice, you like my little weird baggy technique? Let us know what you think in the comments. And while you're down there, buy my book. Literally just came out like yesterday, and the link is in the description. Thank you so much. Okay, Papa Geese. Next, let's talk meat. Taco Bell has been known to have the most pitiful ground meat I've ever experienced, so we're gonna take it a step further by grinding our own. You'll need one and a half pounds 
pounds or 680 grams of boneless chuck roast cut into pieces that will fit into a meat grinder, one and a half pounds or 680 grams of boneless pork shoulder, and half a pound or 225 grams of any bacon that you like. Combine that all into a bowl and, well, run that through your meat grinder of choice. Like I've said before, if you have a KitchenAid stand mixer, there is no reason you should not have the god dang attachment for meat grinding. Link in the description if you want. Once that's ground, knead it together like it's a voluptuous dough until it's nicely emulsified. Now, add in two teaspoons or five grams of chili powder, as in the seasoning, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin. Knead that in. Now, in a large cast iron skillet, heat up just enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan over medium heat. Once that's hot, add in one diced onion, hit that with some salt to taste, and saute for about five minutes, stirring often until softened. Remove that from the pan. Absolutely crank. Your heat up to medium high, and once it's hot, hot, good lord, Jandis, add in your meat, press firmly to make full pan contact, and let that bad boy sear for about two minutes or till nicely brown. Give her a flip and repeat on the other side. Hit that lightly with salt, add your onions back in, and stir that together. Let that continue to cook until everything is mostly fully cooked. Then to get that ultra fine texture, use a potato masher to press over and over until you reach fine crumbles. And then once it's completely cooked, turn off the heat, add in three cloves of finely chopped garlic, and add any additional salt and pepper if needed. And that juicy meaty man is all done. Now for the tomat, it's real easy. First cut off the top and the bottom of a tomato, a nice big chonky one. Then gently remove the core with your knife, squeeze out any excess seeds. Now from there, you'll dice that bad boy into half inch cubes, place them on a sheet tray, and season lightly with salt. Toss and let that sit for 10 minutes. And you should have some nice, plump, yet not overly watery tomatoes. Next component is lettuce. Now hold up. Don't think you're above talking about lettuce. First off, I'm offended. Second off, there's a mind-blowing way to make this better. Maybe mind-blowing might be a bit of an overstatement, but hear me out. Of course, it starts with a half a head of very thinly sliced iceberg lettuce into a bowl, but this is the kicker. Then you're gonna add in a small handful of cilantro finely chopped, the zest of one lemon, toss it all together, and while it doesn't seem like much, you now have the world's freshest and most fragrant sliced lettuce in the world. Okay, it's the moment we've all been waiting for, the Doritos Locos Taco Shell. There are layers here, so be patient. The first layer is our birria flavored beef fat dip. Yeah, now I know your toes just tingled when you heard that. In a small bowl, combine one seeded guajillo chili and one seeded ancho chili. Cover that with boiling water and let that sit until softened. Now in a medium sized cast iron skillet, add one pound or 450 grams of finely chopped beef fat, set over medium low heat and add two cinnamon sticks, half a teaspoon or three grams of ground cumin. Let that cook stirring often until most of the fat is rendered out and you have little brown crispy beef bits. Now turn off the heat and add five cloves of garlic that have been crushed but left whole, three bay leaves, one teaspoon or four grams of dried Mexican oregano. Stir and let those flavors sit and extract for seven minutes. In a blender, add your rehydrated guajillo chilies, minus the water, then strain your beef fat through a mesh strainer and directly into your blender. Blend that on high speed until it's as smooth as you can get it, then press it through another fine mesh sieve, and that right there is a pure unadulterated flavor. Brother. Place that guy to the side and let's make our nacho cheese dust. In a medium sized bowl, add two teaspoons or five grams of chili powder, two teaspoons or five grams of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon or two grams of MSG, two teaspoons or seven grams of fine sea salt, half a cup or 80 grams of cheddar cheese powder, which you can get on Amazon, three tablespoons or 30 grams of buttermilk powder, then give that a nice little whisk until thoroughly combined and that is your seasoning. Okay, we're ready to form our crispy tortillas. Heat a large heavy bottom pot filled halfway with vegetable oil and heat it to 365 degrees Fahrenheit. Now look, you don't need a contraption to form taco shells. You can totally just toss in a corn tortilla, fry until it begins to turn a little stiff, but it's still malleable, then form it with tongs, hold it down in a taco shape until it holds that shape and is brown and crisp to your liking. Now, I for one want these looking like a gat dang machine made it. So instead, I am gonna use some taco shell shapers, so. Hypocrite, he's such a hypocrite, what the heck? Now, I tested some tortillas to be totally raw and some that were dipped in the birria flavored fat. Obviously, the birria flavored fat was 10,000 times better, so I would go that route. Take a corn tortilla, dip it into your birria flavored fat, flip, dip the other side, drain the excess and place on a plate. Then repeat with about 12 to 14 tortillas. Let them sit to soak up all that meaty delicious mm. flavor. And then you're ready to fry. Place the corn tortilla in that bad boy, then drop them in and fry two at a time. And once they're crisp and beginning to turn golden brown, remove them from the oil, pop them on a wire rack and immediately dust on all sides with your nacho cheese powder. And once those are done being dusted, place them upside down to finish cooling on a sheet tray and repeat with the rest of your taco shells. This recipe will make about 12 total tacos. So that means you'll need 12 shells. So we're ready, it's assembly time. First, your taco shell, undeniably crisp and dusted like a freshly snow-capped mountaintop, followed by your juicy meat. Really press it down so it fits nice and snug in there. A generous layer of your Aleppo garlic crema, a nice little garden of your fragrant iceberg, followed by as little or as much tomato as you desire, and to top it all off, a generous layer of fresh grated sharp cheddar cheese. Now this, to me, looks like what a Doritos Locos taco wishes it could be. And really, by comparison, I feel bad for the person that would have to eat that Taco Bell tortilla that's literally built like a rail-thin e-boy. That's a joke, e-boys, please. Any e-boys watching, Papa Keys, okay? Now let's see what really lives up to the hype. 
So this is what the photo looks like, and then this is what you get. Weird how this actually looks like that. Good Lord! There's no competition here at all. There have been a few here and there that were like, oh, this one's better, but you know, not that much. Better. This is a completely different planet. Make this, it will change your life. My life has been changed. Not really though, because I would never go and order this. The richness of the beef, the beef is perfectly seasoned. There's actual flavor in there. The fat, it's juicy, it's rich and unctuous. The crema provides some level of a cut to the richness, some freshness, but there's also a little bit of a right on the and of course, the crunch of the lettuce, it's not overwhelming. This has the meaty component that it needs to combat the lettuce. It's not like a salad in a crunchy taco shell. I'm gonna need to make another one for Mr. Kendrick. Yay, but better. It always feels weird when I can't see. Yeah, I know, anything could go in your mouth. I mean, uh, anything could happen. Hopefully it's a finger. Tell me, have you had a Doritos Locos Taco before? I have not had a Doritos Locos Taco before. You're about to have one of these that could be a Doritos Locos Taco. This is the worst intro we've ever had for a butt better. <laughs> I believe in uh, my- Magic? Do you believe in magic? I do believe in magic. I don't know how to do this. So hold this hand out, turn it this way a little. Well, no. I, um, if you put a taco a in my hand, I, I was, feel like I can figure why it out. Why is your thumb over there? Mine is over here. What are you talking, what? What? Are your thumbs in weird places? I mean, yours are. Jesus, good work. And then numero dos. I already know this next one's gonna be very disappointing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's flopping, I felt it flop. First one's so much better, <laughs> it was so good. Starting off with what I hate about this taco. This Doritos Taco Bell Locos Taco. It's super soggy. I like that you put Taco Bell in the middle of it. Yeah. Doritos Taco Bell Locos. I don't blame Doritos for the for what's wrong. Yeah, with I that. agree. This ground beef just kind of tastes like wet meat. It's slopped up. I even like your like fabricated nacho flavor, yeah. Dorito flavor, more than I like this Dorito. So much better. Okay, here's 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 my last thing is that I would it's about the layering of components that come together to make one beautiful thing, greater than the sum of its parts. It combines to create an amalgamation of flavor that you should desire out of a Doritos Locos Taco. This is what it should have always been. Nice butt better, buddy. Okay, so we're cleaning. Don't forget to get that dang book. It's down in the description. It's out now. What are you doing? What are you, what are you waiting for? We made this whole mess just for you, and I would love for you to have this book, you know? Those pr those pre-orders that everyone got, I really am appreciative of that. I feel like in general, in general, like, you know, not everybody wants to get a book until it's out or anything for that matter. And I feel like it's, it just goes to show how, it just, go, it, just, it just goes to show how much love you guys have. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Get the damn book. It's right here. Go get it. God damn. You wanna know what else has undeniably thick shells and a juicy, moist inside? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made our Doritos Locos Taco. I don't even want to call it that anymore. I'm just gonna say Josh's cheesy yum yum so good taco, or maybe something better than that. This is not something that I would ever make in any other scenario, so I'm not really gonna come up with a good name for it. We're just gonna say that's what it is, and it was actually delicious, and so maybe I will make it again. Mm, I'm contradicting myself. Once you make this, you will suddenly realize how massively better it can be, and I know that that's the constant thing that we say about butt better, but this one really was a shocker. I wasn't sure if we were gonna really be able to match that classic flavor. It definitely had some reminiscent flavors, but it went so far beyond it. I didn't even care, bro. Didn't even care. Take that to heart. Think about it. Stop thinking about it. Go make it. And with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you. <sighs> I'm sweaty. Next time.